Many, many sensors have been discussed in this forum. And I'll be talking about one sensor, that is the GPS data, which is one of the primary source of data for GIS application. Now, as you know, GPS has, a, has its own drawbacks. Now, since Airports Authority of India is into safety of life applications, we cannot use GPS data as it is because it lacks in accuracy, availability, integrity, and continuity. Now, these four basic requirements of civil aviation is not met by GPS. So what we thought is to augment the GPS signals so that all these four, four parameters, essential parameters required for civil aviation can be enhanced. Now this augmentation we achieved through a project called Gagan. Now Gagan stands for GPS-aided geo-augmented navigation. Now the basic purpose of this is to provide services to air traffic industry. However, this Gagan signals can be utilized for non-aviation applications also for GIS. So the data collected from this can be utilized for many GIS applications because it has very good accuracy, it has integrity, moreover it. So integrity of data is very much ensured by Gagan signal in space. Now this particular project is a joint venture between Airports Authority of India and Indian Space Research Organization. Now the basic purpose of Gagan project was to deploy and certify an operational SBAS. Now SBAS stands for Space-Based Augmentation System. As you know, GPS has got several errors. Now these errors have to be computed, and then the computer errors will be broadcast back to the user by means of a geo satellite. So that we call Space-Based Augmentation System, and Gagan is going to be doing the same for Indian region. That is Indian flight information region. And it is in interoperable with the other space-based augmentation systems elsewhere in the world. The famous one being the Americas or the USA's WAS, European Union's IGNOS, and Japanese EMSAS. Now, we are very proud to state that India is the fourth country in the world. We are the fourth country in the world to enter into space-based augmentation system after USA's WAS, European Union's IGNOS, and Japanese EMSAS. And other countries are following, like China is following, Russia is also coming with, with its own space-based augmentation system. Now, the Gagan signal in space has been certified by DGCA, that is Directorate General of Civil Aviation, for what we call route navigation point one operations. And the certification we obtained way back in 14th February 2014. Now, Gagan signal in space is available from February 2014. And it is available free of cost for all users. So anyone who has got an SBAS receiver will be able to receive the Gagan signals and utilize them. Now we are going to enter into the second phase of uh, this particular project, and we are going to certify the Gagan signals for approach purposes for civil aviation. And this we would like to commission by first quarter of 2015.
Now, this is the picture of the worldwide space-based augmentation systems. As I told you, Gagan is strategically placed in the center covering east to west, west to east traffic. So if you look at the roadmap, the project was started way back in 2002, and it has passed through many stages, like technical demonstration, final operation phase, signal in space through GSAT-8 and through GSAT-10, final system acceptance test and certification. Now, if you look at the architecture of Gagam, so basically what we are doing is, it is like DGPS. Now, all of you all are aware of DGPS, differential GPS. The same principle is being used here. We have set up reference stations all over India at 15 locations. And the signals, GPS signals, are received at these 15 reference stations, and the data is brought to a central location called Master Control Station, which is situated at Bangalore. We process this data and estimate the errors. Now, how do we estimate error? Because the reference stations have been very well surveyed to centimeter accuracy. So based on this position data, we estimate the errors. Now, all types of errors have been estimated. That is GPS satellite errors, clock errors, ionospheric errors, multipath errors, and so on and so forth. Now, all these errors will be computed for every satellite, GPS satellite, as well as for every ionospheric grid point, and it is broadcast through an Indian satellite, geosynchronous satellite. We have two satellites broadcasting Gagan signals, GSAT-8 and GSAT-10. So the user will get GPS signals as well as the error signals. So the computation will be a corrected position estimate. So the position we are going to get is very, very accurate. So if you look at the GSAT footprint, we can provide the service of Gagan right from Africa to Australia. So this is the strength of uh, our Gagan signal in space. So we will be able to provide our services to many of our neighboring countries in addition to India. The only uh, thing is we have to have a reference station at that particular location to properly utilize for aviation purposes. For non-aviation, we can very well use it. So these are some of the uh, applications, are some of the uh, advantages for aviation. So it has been used for all phases of flight, right from surface movement to approach to terminal, en route, en route oceanic, and so on and so forth. So, Gagan, we are promoting in this way. We are encouraging regional airlines for retrofitting Gagan-enabled receivers. We are having joint coordination on business development with airlines. We are encouraging neighbor countries to participate in Gagan expansion program. We are ensuring new aircraft registered in India to have Gagan capable receivers and helicopter procedures to be used using Gagan. So this is the Gagan impact outside India. As I said, the Gagan can be utilized by the neighboring countries also. So these are many, many benefits for civil aviation. Now, since we are 
discussing GIS applications, let us try to concentrate on how we can utilize Gagan for GIS. So as being discussed by many speakers in the previous sessions, we can utilize data collected from Gagan in all these applications, like maritime, fisheries, mining, fleet management, town planning, power grid synchronization, automatic banking, precise farming, so on and so forth. So whatever GIS applications you can think of, all can utilize Gagan signal in space. Now the only difficulty is the receiver or the sensor which you are using to collect the GIS data should have SBAS receiving capability. That means a simple GPS receiver will not receive Gagan. We should have an SBAS enabled receiver. Uh, I believe many of the uh, GPS receiver manufacturers are also manufacturing SBAS-enabled receivers because even in Western countries as well as in Europe, they are switching over from simple GPS to SBAS-based receivers. Now, the main advantage of uh, GPA, Gagan over GPS is the accuracy and integrity. Now, this table gives the comparison, the basic comparison. Now, in addition to accuracy, we stress upon the integrity of GPS signals. Now, we are monitoring continuously the GPS satellites. And I tell you, within 6.2 seconds of any GPS satellite going off the air or having some errors, we will be broadcasting back through our error signals. So that much integrity we are ensuring in Gagan signal in space. So this is very essential for aviation applications, but for non-aviation applications, I, I, I don't uh, see uh, this much uh, integrity uh, may be required. But for aviation purposes, yes, it is a must. So if anyone wants an, a data which is having highest integrity, they can go in for Gagan signal in space for their applications. So these are the slides which may be a repetition for all of you. So I don't want to go into the details of uh, this because um, all these things have been discussed by previous speakers. So only thing is the sensors which you use for collecting the GIS data should have Gagan enabled receivers. So that's the only thing which I want to stress here. So road applications, rail transportation, public transportation, maritime applications, safety applications, energy, telecommunication sector, finance, banking, insurance sector, civil engineering sector, agriculture, fisheries, people with disabilities, civil protection, time reference. Because a Gagan signal also broadcasts time. Now, as you're all aware, uh, time is very important in our life. So most of our application depends on GPS time. Now, Gagan time also can be used, and this time we ensure is very close to 50 nanoseconds with respect to GPS time. So the accuracy is 50 nanoseconds as far as Gagan signals are concerned. So we can utilize Gagan signals for time preference also. Science and technology, leisure, recreation, automobiles, smart cities. Uh, a lot of discussions were happening uh, for smart cities, heritage cities, and so on. So we can utilize Gagan signal in space for these applications also. So with this, I try to conclude my lecture. And uh, I can 
take questions in the question and answer hour. So I thank you very much for giving an opportunity to speak before you. Thank you very much.